Hey, everybody. Welcome to another Market Debrief and Market Pre-Brief. Hope you guys all had an amazing week. Uh, in these uh, pre-brief and debrief, we take just about five minutes to take a breath, look at what happened last week, and talk about what may come in the next week. So let's go ahead and get rolling. Let's start by looking back, and we're going to look back and see what happened last week. When we think about what happened last week, you know, early in the week, if you if you joined us last weekend, we talked about the family and the fact that the Russell and the Nasdaq and the Russell and the Nasdaq were starting to go a different direction, which is typically going to be bearish for the other markets. And lo and behold, we had read all over the board this week. Now we, we did come up to a brand new all time high in the S and P on Monday, but then after that, we did see a bit of a sell off Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Now, we did have a pretty strong Friday, which saved us having a, a much deeper pullback. And when I look at the market's movement over the week, uh, here's, a, here's a chart of the S&P. Um, we can see that Monday we had a very big bullish day, giving us, you know, taking us back to that new all-time high. Tuesday, Wednesday, and then Thursday is a green candle, meaning we came all the way down and then rallied back up. At our peak, we were down about 2.5% from the all-time high which is certainly not a terrible amount. But one thing that I want to take a look at, let me throw the SPY on here. Uh, I like to look at the SPY because I can get a good volume picture. And when I take a look at our volume on Friday, I do note that my rally up was on lower volume. So my rally was up was uh, my rally up was on lower volume. Doesn't mean that I'm not, you know, a fan of that rally up. I think it was a pretty good move higher. But no, everything was higher volume last week, right? We had low volume. Last week was our highest volume week in actually quite a while. If I look at this on a weekly chart, you can see last week was our highest volume week since eh, maybe in July we had a week that was the same. But other than that, we haven't had a week that that was, that that was definitively you know, larger than that since May. So this is the, you know, we're coming into the tail end of summer. Tail end of summer, you know, August and September are typically historically not great months for the market. And so let's see if we do get a little bit of a pullback, if that does indeed continue. That is something for me to consider, especially the fact that we had lower volume on Friday's rally. So in looking at what caused it, first of all, there's, there's definitely the, the supply chain disruption uh, by the Delta variant are real. And when we talk about supply chain disruptions, you know, think about the semiconductors and the amount of microchips that are not being sent. Semiconductors, uh, you know that 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 sec that sector has really slowed down a lot of other sectors because if if those chips can't get into the cars, the cars don't get sold, and and so you do see that it will kind of come down the line. Also, there was some increased fear uh, to vaccine efficacy. We're seeing that you know, most of the Delta variants, from what I've gathered, most of the Delta variants that are, getting, that are, that are contracting COVID have had, the, uh, have had you know, the vaccine, although they may, may or may not have. Now it is helping people from staying out of the hospital, apparently. Um, and so there is con concerns in the market about vaccine efficacy and what's that going to do as far as more shutdowns, more slowdowns to our overall economy. By the way, not being political, just going off what I have heard. So Please, I'm, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's just, I'm just, just reporting what I've, what I've heard and what I gather. Um, uh, the Fed's taper timeline, I think, was really the biggest shocker because they, they rehashed the commentary that the tapering is going to happen sooner rather than later. And that scares a lot of people, right? They, the market has become addicted to free money. And anytime you talk about taking the free money away, it kind of scares them a little bit. A uh, little bit on China's regulatory crackdown, so the regulations of stocks in the Chinese market. We've seen a lot of the Chinese stocks specifically getting hammered, um, Alibaba being probably one of the biggest. Uh, another one is Afghanistan overtaken by the Taliban. I mean, there was news uh, that, that, that came into play there, um, and certainly some horrific images coming out of there. Prayers for everybody that's back there, um, you know, everybody that's, that's, that are expats trying to get home to their country or the people that live there that don't necessarily love the regime change. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be a very difficult time for a lot of people. And so continued prayers for peace and safety for the people that are there. Um, and then ultimately, ultimately, it's just the potential for a larger pullback. 
right? All of these were concerns last week in the market. And we only dropped six tenths of a percent, right? I think to me, the moral of the story is that we had all of this stuff happen and all of these things going on, and we only dropped six tenths of a, of a percent. Now, as we expected, we did get a VIX spike on this pullback. We do pay attention to the overall placement of the VIX. We did get a spike up, uh, spiked up above 25, and then immediately came selling off. Um, we were a little bit concerned end of last month, beginning of this month, that we were seeing a VIX rally on all-time highs. And so, you know, I, I don't I think that this little pullback tells us that there's probably more of a of an opportunity that the markets are going to continue to rally higher as we head into next week. And when I look at those uh, at those markets overall, you know, I looking at looking at those uh, those those four markets. My Dow Jones, Nasdaq, Russell, and S and P. If I look at this, you know, you know, moving moving forward into these uh, into these four markets, let's look at them on a weekly time period. If I pull up my SPX on a weekly chart, NDX on a weekly, Russell on a weekly, Dow Jones on a weekly chart. We're looking here and seeing the fact. That all four of my markets are in a very strong uptrend. Excuse me, all three three of my four markets are in a very strong uptrend. The Russell has officially gone sideways. It's just chopping along. And there are spots here that if we break below, we may see some weakness. And just keep in mind some of the areas that we've looked at in the NASDAQ. Now, the S&P gave us a little pullback last week. Frankly, it wasn't as big of a pullback as I was hoping for. I was really looking for about a 3% pullback into this region here where we had a little wick over wick area. Let me get rid of these lines so they can see. Um, we had, a, uh, we had a, a decent little level for a reversal, and unfortunately just didn't come deep enough to really get the trade that I was hoping to gather. So looking at this for, t for, for next week, I think next week when I, when I peer at this from a daily chart perspective, it looks like, Last week was just a pullback, and there's a big chance that we continue to rally higher. A little bit concerned that we had lower volume, um, but just keep that, uh, that, that as my, my movement opportunities in mind. Looking at the Russell 2000, that one on a daily chart definitely didn't have the same ability to get a new high. And so the rut is sitting above a pretty pivotal breakdown point below 2106. Uh, and if we drop below there, we may drop another 100 points. So uh, keep keep the Russell as a uh, as a strong area. If you're looking to get short, the Russell's going to lead us. Now, we talked about looking back. Let's now shift gears here a little bit, and let's look ahead. So looking ahead to what we have coming up this week, we're going to start with our earnings calendar. And our NASDAQ earnings calendar for this week uh, if I pull up Monday, we see that we've got JD.com, Palo Alto Networks. Uh, not a lot of stocks that people are going to be overly familiar with that they trade regularly. Looking at Tuesday, Medtronic is probably the big one into it, uh, INTU. Uh, BBY, Best Buy, we did see some retail stocks reporting this week. Uh, so Best Buy is coming in next week. Uh, Wednesday, the big one is CRM, Salesforce. Uh, so that's, uh, that's one to pay attention to, as well as Autodesk, ADSK. Um, CRM and ADSK, both very highly traded, as is Ulta Beauty, um, by a lot of traders. So if you're trading those, just be aware of some of the movements that may occur. Thursday of next week, we have uh, TD, the T Toronto Dominion Bank, Dell, uh, VMware workday, so a couple of interesting ones in, on Thursday, and then wrapping up the week you know, on Friday, we really don't have a whole lot of stocks. Um, big lots would probably be the one that I see most traders utilizing most regularly out of this list. And so, kind of a slow earning week. We're starting to wind down on our earnings reports, so that'll keep your uh, that'll keep your your earnings movements in check. As far as economic announcements next week, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday look clear. Not a whole lot happening. Um, Jackson Hole Symposium, preliminary GDP on Thursday morning, and then the CPE on Friday morning. So the, the GDP followed by the 
the, 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 the consumer price index, all of those are important combined with the fact that we've got Fed, Fed Chair Powell speaking at the Jackson Hole Symposium. So those are going to be things that will be market movers. So make sure you're not trading breakouts around those announcements, but use those announcements to, to set up high probability turning points. That's all I have for today, everybody. I hope you guys have a, a good session and enjoyed it. If you, need, if you have any questions, send us an email, support at tradersarmy.com. Shoot us a text, 973-348-5022. Till next week, everybody. Talk to you soon. See ya.